believe God if it's going our way. We got to believe God if it's not going our way. We got to believe God to lay hands on ourselves when we feel a scratching voice coming. You got to believe God when he says about your word. By your faith, you've been made whole. Yes. Yes. God's given us a word tonight, and I want to give honor and praise to Jesus Christ, who is the head of the church. Amen. I'm grateful for all of you um, putting a, a, a dent in your schedule. I know y'all had some finger popping to do <laughs> out in the clubs, but you went ahead and you postponed your clubbing to come out and hear my Easter speech tonight. Amen. I'm excited. I'm excited to share what God has placed on my heart. And I've been looking forward to preaching this since about 3 a.m. this morning. So if I seem just a little bit excited, don't y'all pay me no mind. I slow down around the end and we'll all catch up. Amen. Now to my bride, I appreciate my wife and everything that she does in the midst of this season. She continues to keep on blessing us. Amen. 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 These deacons, uh, Elder Williams, uh, our, our media team, they just roll with the punches. Where are we setting up today, Pastor? Amen. Now they, they up there in the rafters. They just set it up. God bless you for your diligence. Um, I, I bring your attention to Psalm 91. Psalm 91, and once you have Psalm 91, unfortunately, we don't have our monitors today, so um, I started telling y'all about three weeks ago, start bringing your Bible, amen, and so practicing that Bible because it's right there in the middle of the Bible. If you've never found Psalm before, look in your table of contents, and it will be right there for your, your finding. <clears throat> but it's right there in the middle. Seems like God knew that that would be something we would need on a regular basis, so he put it right in the middle of the Bible. Yes. Psalm 91. And if you have your own Bible, and if this is not highlighted yet, um, this is a great opportunity to do so. I'll be reading from the Christian Standard Bible, so mine will read just a little bit different than yours, but you, you know what you heard in Sunday school. You know what you heard when he was going through, but let's go ahead and read. The Bible says it this way. The one who lives under the protection of the Most High dwells in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say concerning the Lord, who is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. He himself will rescue you from the bird trap, from the destructive plague. He will cover you with his feathers. You will take refuge under his wings. His faithfulness will be a protective shield. You will not fear the terror of the night, the arrow that flies by day the plague that stalks in darkness or the pestilence that ravages at noon. Here's your scripture. Though a thousand fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand, the pestilence will not reach you. Hey, yes. Praise yes. the Lord. Woo. What we're going to use tonight as a scripture is running to the place of shelter. Yeah. Amen. Heavenly Father, we come before you asking you, God, that you bless Father God me, O oh God, so I can be who you called me to be, God. Use me as your conduit, Father God. Touch my mouth, touch my mind, touch my heart, God. Allow all fleshly thoughts of me, Father God, to fall at my feet. Use me, Father God, so Calvary can be glorified, that your mighty hand will be glorified, that your protective arm will be glorified, God. Remind us, Father God, that we have nothing to fear. You haven't given us a mind to fear, a spirit of fear, but a mind, power, love, and a sound mind. God, thank you for this word. Thank you for the opportunity to share here with your lambs. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Yeah. You may be seated in the presence of our Lord. Running to the place of shelter. It's, it's difficult to appreciate shelter when you always have shelter. It's hard to get excited about somebody opening up their facility to you 
when you already have your own facility. It's difficult to praise God for somebody saying, you can worship on Saturday evening, and we'll come in at our normal schedule time on Sunday morning. Right. I'm just warming y'all up. It's difficult to praise God when you don't know or appreciate the, what shelter really is. If you never lived under a vile doc, you don't understand how important it is to have shelter. Shelter is purpose to keep you outside of the elements. Shelter is a part of a human basic need along with food, water, and compassion. Ship. It is a structure, I'm still talking about shelter, it's a structure that protects you from the elements and gives you a place to live. Amen. I think somebody just missed that shot. I said shelter will protect you from the outside and the things that are outside trying to get inside. Shelter keeps you away from those things outside trying to influence your inside. Yeah. The first thing you need to do when you find yourself in a rainstorm is find some shelter. Yeah. Because if you don't find shelter in the midst of a storm, you're going to get all types of wet. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. And if you're in a financial storm, you're going to get all types of broke. Yeah. But if you haven't found your shelter in Christ Jesus, the solid rock, yeah. you always going to be drowning because you ain't got no shelter. A shelter is a protected place. I like this part. Watch this. A shelter is a protected place to stay. A shelter is temporary when you own hard times. But you don't celebrate a shelter where it's a bunch of folks that you don't know in there. But you show enough praise God when he give you shelter and you can hide your own key under the door. Now that's shelter that you can stay. There's a difference in shelter that's temporary than shelter that's permanent. I gotta give y'all some scripture now, now. Now, now, when you have shelter, I'm no architect, but I, I stayed at a Holiday Express Inn before, so I'm gonna talk like I know what I'm talking about. Now, a shelter is a building, but before a building can be erected, it's gotta have a strong foundation. <laughs> don't want no shelter that don't have a strong foundation because I might find myself running into something for shelter without foundation and this building gonna fall on my head. I, I think y'all missed the gym. Y'all going to be in the gym tonight? Oh, these pews are a little too comfortable. Oh, we're moving out tomorrow. Okay, man. So a foundation, the Bible tells us clearly, Jesus said in Matthew 7 and 24, therefore, Everyone who hears these words of mine and acts on them will be like a wise man who built his house on the rock. Right. The rain fell. Y'all heard this before? The rivers rose. The, the wind blew and pounded that house, yet it did not collapse. I'm feeling my shout already because its foundation was on the rock. Y'all at the end of my sermon already in my shout. Everyone who hears these words of mine and doesn't act on them is like a fool who built his house on sand. Yeah. Somebody says, Pastor, you mess with me tonight. Well, I'll just tell you, if your foundation is not built on the solid rock, Jesus Christ, and you're wondering why you're paddling in debt, you're wondering why you're paddling in sorrows, you're wondering why you're paddling in all types of life issues, well, I just hate to make this clear to you, you might have built your foundation on sand. Now, when you build your foundation on sand, you find the first thing that you can grab. It don't take a lot of thinking to build on sand because sand is plentiful. It takes ingenuity to go find some rocks and flatten them rocks out and spend a little time building your foundation because sand is the equivalent of quick. 
But the foundation means you gotta wait on the Lord and be a good person. You might not like your situation, but you wait on the Lord. While you wait on the Lord, he's building your foundation. He shows you how to pray when you suffer. He shows you how to cry when you're rejoicing. He shows you how to run when ain't nobody chasing you. I say when your foundation is built on the solid rock, you will do something crazy like thank you Jesus for letting me have church on a Saturday. done preaching, now I'm going to teach. Now the Bible wants me to ask you this question. <laughs> and since I gave you that opportunity to see the comparison between the type of foundation is on your shelter, because Danielle, we all need shelter. I think we've argued that point. But what my argument this evening is, the shelter you run to has what type of foundation? Which leads to another question, man. Where do you live? Where do you live? Do you live on Faith Street or do you live on Fear Avenue? I'm just trying to find out what kind of shelter you run into because if you run into everybody for help and you can't get no help, you run into the wrong shelter, baby. Scripture wants us to know it like this, that he is the most high God. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if that do nothing for you, yeah. but I don't want any kind of God. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want no God I can carry in and put on my end table. Yeah. No, no, no. I don't want no God that I can lay my hands on. Yeah. I want somebody I can worship that I can't see him, but I can see what he's done. I want to worship somebody when I look back over my life and I can look at the 40 ounces in my hands and I can look at the blood shot out and then I fast forward to the last 20 years of my life and see him clean up a drunk and gave him the opportunity to serve communion. I'm talking about the kind of God that can clean up an alcoholic and allow him to counsel alcoholics. That's the kind of God that I call the most the most high God. Them fancy people, them smart folks like Dr. Brookings call them Elohim. Elohim is the most high God, meaning that he ain't like any other God. He's the God of the gods. Now, some of them folks on Facebook like to say things like this. The universe has opened up things on us. Well, the universe is my God's footstool. I give no credence to the universe. My God spoke in the universe form. You make sense. You're talking about the most high God. You make reference to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Because I'm not just serving any kind of God. I'm serving the God that changes lives. I'm serving the kind of God that gives me shelter. I'm serving the kind of God that put a hedge of protection around me. I'm serving the kind of God that when I'm afraid, I can call on his name. I'm serving the kind of God that can speak life to dead things. I serve the kind of God that tells people, go no more. The kind of God that says your back is healed. The kind of God that says you will bring another ball in your body ever again. I serve the most. I just can't spend time in anybody's shelter. I need the shelter where the most high God is. The kind of God that speaks life to dead things. I, I can't move, Queen Elizabeth. I'm trying. But the kind of God that says, when I felt like I was catching something in my throat, and I said, not today, Lord. If it be thy will, heal my voice. I, that's who I love. Yes. Yes. That's what the writer says. I, I run to him because I love him. Yes. <laughs> yes. I, I don't just run to him because of what he did for me. Yes. <laughs> when I yes. look back over my life, I, I, I look through my love catalog. I look at the people who walked off and left me. I looked at how poorly I treated him, Sister Jones, and he kept on loving me. He, he's the God of 
have another chance now. When I wasn't thinking about him, the Bible says he sent his love towards me through his son, Jesus Christ. That's the kind of God I love. I got to run. I'm, I'm, I got to run. I got to run to this kind of God. I'm almost done, y'all. Now, the, now, the, now, verse 2 says, I will say concerning the Lord, who is my refuge and my fortress, my God, and whom I trust. He himself will rescue you from the bird trap, from the destructive plague. <laughs> if you're taking notes, my first note is this. Trust God for your security. I, I don't know what kind of deal you got with Brinks. Don't know what you signed up for with AET. But I want the security that my God has afforded me. I want security from an omnipresent God. I want security from an omniscient God. I want the security of a God who knows my thoughts before I think them. I want the security of a God that will tell me to sit down somewhere when I'm getting beside myself. This is the scripture that God gives me to help me be secure in what he can do and not what I can do for myself. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. I think somebody in here knew that was going to be in this scripture. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your pathways. Pastor, you use that scripture every time. How come you keep using that scripture? Because somebody in here got a hard head. That we want security, but we want to control the lock. We want shelter when we want shelter. When we live in our best life, we don't want what God wants for us. But as soon as the bottom fall out, where is God on my side? But God says, when I'm your security, I tell your beautiful self no when you think it should be yes. You need somebody in your life that loves you enough to say no. Sit down somewhere. You think you want that, but that thing you want is giving you a cavity. Lord, have mercy. You think your butterscotches taste good, but fast forward 25 years. You fucking on the butterscotches, and the butterscotches ain't got no harm for you. I can talk to somebody in a relationship like right now. You think you're having a good time, but fast forward seven years from now, baby. Well, 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 well. But it tastes so good. All right, Second Samuel. I want God to be my protector. Second Samuel 2, 22 and 2 says this, and he said, the Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, the God of my rock and him will I trust. He is my shield and my horn of salvation, my high tower and my refuge, my savior, thou saveth me from violence. I'm trying to help us in here that God says, I want to be your protector. Protection, but you got to turn your life over to me. You can't just want me when you want me. You got to surrender all. And when you surrender all, I got an all blessing for you. I am able to do exceedingly, abundantly, and all you ever ask, hope, or think because you have surrendered to me being your protection. Go ahead and preach, Pastor. Since he's going to be my protection, I need him to also be my provider. Lord, have mercy. I don't, I don't need you looking for a spouse with a good 401k plan or a 401b plan. You need to be searching for a spouse that's afraid of God. Provider. 
one of the names of God is Jehovah Jireh, which means the Lord is my provider. The Lord will provide. It's also wonderful to know that God is my source of everything. Somebody just missed the answer that God is your source to everything. If you've been wondering why you ain't happy lately, God says, I'm still your source. I just need you to plug back into me. I ain't went nowhere. You turned away from me. I'm still here standing, waiting for my prodigal son to come back home. The father ain't mad at you. He disappointed in the sin. Go ahead and preach in fear. Since y'all talking about protection, I also need him to be my peace. Because sometimes it ain't the fact that people chasing me, but I'm not secure in who I am or who got me, and my mind is running all day long worrying about stuff that ain't my business. I gotta turn it over to the Lord and let God work it out. What kind of scriptures you got for peace? Amen. I'm glad you asked. Numbers 6 and 26. The Lord lift up his countenance on you and give you peace. Hold up. Rewind. What did that say? That when God's head turns in your direction, his face looking at you will give you peace. Somebody just needs what God said in here. That when God is paying attention to my situation and my issues, my issues have already been worked out because God is already paying attention. I feel so good in here right now. Yeah. Philippians 4 and 7 and the peace of God which passeth all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ yes. Yes. Jesus. Yes. Yes. Somebody says, but yes. I know what the Bible says. But the news keep telling me I can't shake nobody's hand. The Holy Spirit urged me to speak the gospel to somebody, but they coughed a little bit too much. I knew I had a word for them, but they looked all German. Can I go ahead and clear up what's going on right now? That right now ain't nobody thinking about but nobody but themselves. That if I do what God called me to do, some residue may get on me. It's hard to share the gospel of Jesus Christ through a mask. Go ahead and talk back to me if you can. It's difficult to touch and agree if you ain't supposed to touch nobody right now. It's difficult to lay hands on the sick if you're afraid that what they sick of gonna get off on you. I'm just trying to help somebody today to pray for wisdom every day. That God give me a mechanism that I can be your agent and keep on working Give me a mind uh, to be creative with the gospel, to not be afraid uh, of what the world is afraid of. Uh, you said that you're going to be my security. Well, since you're my security, give me an A plan so I can keep on doing what you called me to do. I need you to do one more thing, God. Will you insulate me? Will you protect me wherever I go? Will you keep my mind focused on me? When I breathe in something, will you kill it, God? Before it gets to my lungs, if somebody sneezes in my vicinity, God, would you anoint my head with oil and kill that germ before it affects your man? God, I'm asking. I told you I love you. I ran to your tower. Will you bless me, Lord? The word says you bless me indeed. John 14 and 27. This peace I live with you. Yes. My peace I give to you. Yes. Watch this, y'all. Not as the world yes. gives. Uh, yes. Give I to you. I give you peace yes. when it don't make sense yes. that 25 people get affected with the coronavirus in, in Michigan. That's the kind of peace that when you say it, you says, well, I'm praying for their families. The world don't have that kind of peace. The world's peace will say that there's no coronavirus brew in Michigan. But the peace that Jesus gives you means that you will have tribulation. But in this world, you will have tribulation. But be of good cheer. I 
now, like Jesus in the garden of Gethsemane. If this cup would pass, God, can I get back to evangelizing after we get the all clear? News flash, Christians. Our commission don't stop when calamity comes. This is the time to get in your word. So when them people call you with them fearful conversations, don't make them feel bad because they're scared. Thank the Lord that he chose you to open your mouth. I got to move on. Verse 4. He will cover you with his feathers. You will take refuge under his wing. His faithfulness will be a protective shield. You will not fear the terror of night, the arrow that flies by day. Watch out now. The plague that stalks in darkness or the pestilence that ravages at noon. What's the point, Pastor? I gotta give this to us so you can understand it. Write it down because when Wednesday morning news come, you gonna have to regurgitate this word. Y'all ready? I need you to trust God to guard you from what terrifies others. Trust God to guard you from what terrifies others. The great danger is that what's going on with them is going to get on me. You ain't got to raise your hand, holy person. You ain't got to raise your hand, fairly Christian. But the fact of the matter is, if you continue to take in everything that the world tells you is wrong, you're going to start believing what the world says more than what the Bible says. Some people might have said this, uh, that's way back then. Uh, did Jesus really remove leprosy? Did Jesus really turn blind people to missionaries? Uh, did Jesus really clear up that issue of blood? Well, I just want to remind you of this, uh, that the Bible is inerrant. Uh, everything that's written in the logos is true by the Holy Spirit, inspired men, pen the word. God. If every miracle of Jesus was recorded, this room could be filled with books of everything he did on a daily basis. And we got people afraid of people sneezing on them. The devil is alive. Even if I am a carrier of the virus, the blood still works. God. You gotta be honest right here. I'm gonna pull the end out. Watch this. God speak to my fearful heart. Yes. God speak to my fearful heart. Because Christians, we don't like to say we scared. We say we cautious and concerned. You know, because somebody might take your spirituality card if you say you're afraid. 
But I want you to understand, there will be times in this life when you're going to be scared and your knees going to be shaking. You're going to hear something that the doctor says, and you ain't going to be able to remember your name. There's going to be something that your husband got to go to the appointment with you for because you ain't going to be able to hear nothing of what the doctor said. And that's called afraid, baby. The fact of the matter is, you can be afraid, but don't stay afraid. talking about. Is that in the Bible? Oh, yes it is. First Timothy 1 and 7. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. They ain't like that one, Sister Scott. How about 1 John 4 18? That there is no fear in love. But perfect love drives out Fear because fear has to do with punishment. Well, well, right. Woo! <laughs> the one who fears is not made perfect in love. Mm -hmm. That quiet, Brother Breeze. You yeah. heard it? Yeah. What John is talking to us about is, is that we want to be secure in who we go to for shelter. Yeah. And if you don't have a secure relationship with a shelter, with a strong foundation, you just might find yourself on Scary Boulevard. Because you can go to church, you can park in a sanctified parking spot, you can sit on plush pews, but if you don't believe that Jesus is your redeemer, you're going to be afraid of a net in the kitchen, you're going to be afraid of people sneezing across the street, you're going to be afraid of a skeleton on TV. You're going to be afraid of everything. Uh, don't tell me, don't nobody email me about what I just said. Amen. <laughs> you work out your scary heart with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Uh, the Bible wants us to understand that our security has to be secure in our relationship to the one who can protect us. There's no sense of having a protective system over your house and when you turn the key, you don't know the code. The first thing the police say when they call is what's the access code? Right. Nobody in here ever got in your house and forgot the code before? Uh -huh. <laughs> the first thing they ask, uh, what's the code? Uh, what is that doing? That is evidence that you have a relationship with that resident. Uh, is this thing still on? If you find yourself in a residence and you don't have a code, that might mean you don't have a relationship with that resident. Give a subscription, Pastor. Jesus said, many are going to come before me and say, Lord, Lord. He's going to say, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. They're going to say, but we called out demons in your name. We cooked chicken for the church anniversary. We did all types of things for the church. Well, Jesus says, well, you might have done those things in my name, but you weren't authorized by me to do them. I think I'm pretty good in here. Don't have false security in something that you didn't pay for. All right. All right. Verse 7, the thousand fall at your side and 10,000 by your right hand. The pestilence will not reach you. Can I read that again? Though a thousand may fall by your side, and ten thousand at your right side. Can I, can I answer again? The thing that they died from will not touch you. Okay. 
Make it a point to make that verse sound better, Barb. Watch this. Trust God to keep you from the issues that's going to kill others. Trust God to keep you from the issues, let me add to this, that's killing others. He said, just because you're anointed and you sanctified, meaning I pulled you out, don't mean that no issues ain't going to come to your house. It don't mean that you ain't going to get a pink slip every now and again. It don't mean that people going to say you got to take a pay cut for the team. You ain't gonna have no issues in your marriage. But what it does say is the same issues that you're going through, everybody else dying from it, and because they don't have the right kind of shelter. themselves by the things that you've been going through for 15, 20 years. I don't make light of what decision somebody made, but I want you to weigh the weight that's been on your life. And somebody had this testimony. Something told me to leave that basement party at the right time. Newsflash, baby. Your protector whispered in your soul and said, Get your camera and get your butt out of here. Say, you ain't even know. You ain't even know that you had to get out of that basement party. Because the Lord had already ordained you and Mama to be Priscilla and Aquila. Nobody needed no reach them out. They were elders who understood the word. But they ran into a young preacher named Apollos who had zeal without knowledge. Read your Bible. But Priscilla and Aquila mentored that preacher. Priscilla and Aquila spoke life to that preacher. And they turned him into a great evangelist. But if he hadn't have been obedient to that whisper in his ear, he would have missed his assignment. So I'm just trying to encourage somebody. And was it your good luck? It wasn't good luck. It was your shelter. Come on now. Your shelter has the opportunity to look down the telescope of life and see everything that's coming your way. Your shelter knows how to lock you up to save your life. Watch this. Your shelter will allow you not to get away with sneaking and creeping, and man, you got a fat belly. Ha. Stand with me. One of y'all mad because you had a baby, but God says that was the only way to save your life. Shelter that you run to so the elements don't get inside you. I feel good now. Shelter that stop that bullet before it hit my face. Shelter that allow me just to walk past the HIV clinic. Shelter that allow that sneeze to come right in my face. And I hit it like the Matrix. will give you forgiveness. Shelter will cleanse you. But I forgot something about the shelter. When they built the shelter, they built it on a strong foundation. But the strong foundation 
foundation wasn't good enough. They put a roof on it. They put walls on it. They put doors on it. And they put windows in it. But it was dry shelter. It wasn't a shelter that was pleasing. It wasn't a shelter that was welcoming. It was a shelter that said, stay out. Unless you've been covered. They needed to add one thing to the shelter. That shelter thing is called the blood. Jesus, the blood of Jesus gave you forgiveness for your sins. The blood of Jesus cleansed your mind and your soul. The blood of Jesus redeemed you back to God. The blood of Jesus justified you at Calvary. The blood of Jesus is sanctifying you right now. The blood of Jesus has given you peace that you've never known before. The blood of Jesus gave us access to the Father. So now I can go to God on my own and say, Daddy, I'm afraid. Daddy, I'm scared. And I can hear God saying, come on home. This is your shelter. Run to your shelter. This is your place. I sent my son to die for you so you can have peace. I'm running. Not from my situation. I'm running to my place of shelter. Sometimes I'm running and my knees is knocking, but I know where I'm going. Sometimes I can't get my words together in my prayer life, but I know who I'm talking to. Sometimes when I try to study, my eyes, they get dim, and I start talking to the Lord through my eyelids. But the Lord has taken my heart, and the Holy Spirit puts those petitions right by his ears, that I'm blessed that when my prayer is broke, the Holy Spirit fixes it up for God. He knows what I need before I I feel good about a shelter. This shelter gives me joy. This shelter makes me run when ain't nobody chasing me. This shelter makes water run from my eyes and I'm not even sad. This shelter allows me to scream at the top of my lungs. This shelter makes me feel right at home. Heavenly Father, yes. we thank you, God, for providing the shelter. Yes. We thank you, God, for opening your mind, your heart, and your spirit to us. Yes. God, you saved us. You plucked us up yes. right in the middle of good sin. Yes. You plucked us out, Father God, because you had shelter for us. Yes. You had a place, Father, for us yes. to allow us, Lord God, to know without a shadow of a doubt that we can't go back to our old address. If we go back, God, we're not the same as we used to be. If we go back, Father God, we're only going to bring people back to our new place. Thank you, God, for this opportunity to share your word. Take all praise and worship unto yourself. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. And the church said, Praise the Lord. Thanks for joining us in that message. And I want to appeal to you that it was great for you to watch us have service, but I invite you to have service with us at Pierce Middle School, located right inside of Redford, Michigan. You can also support us online. The information is below. Won't you please come out? I invite you to serve with us or partner with us. Thanks again.